to the Marriage Can Win show. We are your hosts, Eric and Dr. Shakisha Halek, your relationship experts. Here at Marriage Can Win, we educate, we empower, and we encourage couples to embrace that marriage can win, especially when you focus on three key areas, improving your communication skills, enhancing your money management skills so you're not living paycheck to paycheck, and enhancing your intimacy skills so your marriage can win. And we would like to invite you and all of your family members to join the broadcast. And make sure you let us know what city and state that you are located in. And if you're not following us on Instagram, go ahead and follow us now, and we will follow you back. Also, join our podcast at marriagecanwinpodcast.com. And also join the Marriage Can Win show on YouTube. Now, we are so ecstatic tonight. We have a world-renowned money expert, a sought-after speaker, an entrepreneurial thought leader, and five-time New York Times best-selling author joining us this evening. She has, she's on a relentless mission to change the conversation about money and empower people around the world to become millionaires. She's the CEO and founder of Integrated Wealth Systems, it's a global organization and she shares her experience without hesitation or apology. Now that's my type of that's my type of entrepreneur. And what sets her apart from other wealth experts is her innate ability to hone in on the skills and talents of everyday people and inspire them to generate wealth. She has created, nurtured and perfected a 3 to 5 year strategy to make millions for the average Jill and Joe. Mm -hmm. Now she, her company has helped create over thousands of millionaires through her mastermind groups, her wealth building seminars, her live workshop, her, and her mentoring programs. People such as Bob Proctor, John Gray, Jay Conrad Levinson, and Michael Gerber are a few of the powerful champions of her work. She electrifies audiences and inspires powerful action from stages and television programs such as CNN, CNBC, The Street TV, Fox News Channel, Fox Business Channel. She's been featured on The Dr. Phil Show and The View. She's a regular guest host on The Circle in Australia. And she's actually been featured in The New York Times, Forbes Magazine and the World's Wall Street Journal. And she's even a breakout star in the film, The Secret. She is quick to speak the truth that leaves no doubt about her point of view. Viewers, I want you to welcome with us this evening, none other than Laurel Langmeyer. <laughs> Look at you guys like superstar introducers. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Laurel, how are you Thank doing this evening? Thank you so great. Thank you for having me here. Oh yes. Now we are so we're just so ecstatic about having you here because one of the things that really, really impacts relationships today, finance is a huge component mm, on yes. it. And you have a vast array of experience in this area. Can you share with our listeners a little bit about what inspired you or what was your aha moment that caused you to say, you know what, this is what I'm called to do? Wow, what do I even start? So I grew up in a farm in Nebraska, great family farm, but we, I was never taught about money. And I don't think most people are taught, I don't, I know people weren't taught about money. And so you kind of struggle through this, you know, family and friends and being influenced on whatever the heck they all think. And then at 17, I was off to uh, go to college. Uh, I was going to go play basketball, but I had to pay my way through school. And um, somebody invited me to a seminar. I'm like, well, what's the seminar? Like in Nebraska, you don't go to seminars. I don't, you might go to SEED and like, you know, 4-H or FFA, but you don't go to a seminar for personal development. Anyway, so I went and, um, and Dennis Waitley gave me the book, Think and Grow Rich. And that was my moment. I consumed the book, I don't even know, maybe a day, and said, oh my gosh, this totally resonates with my soul. And I always knew growing up, you could ask all my family members, they would say, I'm the black sheep. And I'd say, no, I'm the right sheep. I'm going the right direction. And it's a way, like, just financially, there had to be a way of 
like why do so few people become millionaires? And so I have just uh, through my teens, I got a finance degree, uh, started my first company doing aerobics instruction, personal training, and then did what everybody did in the late eighties, early nineties in that time. When you don't know what you're gonna do, you just keep paying to go to school. So then I got a master's degree at physiology. And uh, at 24 years old, I had another like, I, I call it my yes moment. So here I am 24 years old, I get a multi-million dollar contract to build fitness centers on offshore oil rigs in New Orleans. So I'm a farm girl from Nebraska. I have this finance and exercise physiology degree, which don't really go together. And but I knew how to do analysis of unhealthy people for companies. And I knew how to cost analysis, back injuries and smokers and all that stuff. And so Chevron hired me on a contract and I went offshore in New Orleans for years and built fitness centers. And uh, long straight, it arrived to me in San Francisco, which is how I got out here to the West Coast. Now I'm in Northern Nevada, Lake Tahoe area. And uh, 1996 was another yes moment where I met Robert Kiesak and Sharon Lecter, and I was the master distributor for their cash flow game. And in 2000, started the brand Live Out Loud, Live Out Loud About Money. Um, and you know what's so fun about your marriage work you do is Bob Proctor told me, Laurel, if you're going to commit your life to a conversation, talk about money, sex, or God, and you have a conversation for your whole life. And you have two of them, money and sex. I love it. <laughs> we do talk about God. Too. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> a God. That God? <laughs> but I'll never forget when Bob said, you know, he said, why are you so compelled about money? I said, because I think it's a joke. I think, you know, I, I can tell you a whole history backstory, but and here we are again with COVID, which there's a whole, you know, financial infrastructure going on. But the rich get rich and the poor get poor, and most people don't get it. And unfortunately, marriage, for some odd reason, comes in the middle of it. And the, you know the statistics, you probably know the exact statistics, but they're north of 60% get divorced. And it's not as a sex, well, it's lack of communication, maybe lack of sex. But they don't have, they can't figure out money. They can't right. figure it out and they have these weird rules. And here you have to imagine two humans coming together, probably for sex, and then bringing their weird relationship to money to this relationship that doesn't make any sense and they don't have no vehicle to communicate. So I'm so excited that I'm on the show because I have so much help for those families. All right. Wow, we're excited to have you on. Definitely. Well, let's, what's, what's one of your key or your core strategies for handling it all? Because you're a mentor, you're a coach, you've done real estate investments, business acquisitions, you're helping, you're the pioneer, a lot of work. What yeah. is your strategy for handling it all? Yes, and balance it with your marriage. Yeah. Well, I gotta say God is up above, but, um, I compartmentalize. So I learned early on, I've always had male mentors and Sharon Lecter, who's like, I call her my financial mom. And unfortunately there are very few financial or just female mentors. There's, there's so few, right? Um, and I remember just seeking mentors of any kind about how, why so few people become millionaires. It cannot be that difficult. And when you really break it down and you really get committed, you can figure out how to do it. So I'm gonna give a whole bunch of folks that are listening to our broadcast, a bunch of gifts, our millionaire matrix, and which is how do you make it, keep it, invest it with the team. And there's a strategy and there's a philosophy. But when you think about getting married um, and you get married young, where you have no financial philosophy or strength, then you come together and you rely on each other for it. So usually one becomes stronger and has the voice which is why I'm adamant. And I called my, my the core of our company still live out loud. And I say, you gotta live out loud about it because somebody's gonna have a stronger voice and everybody has to understand the money. And it can't just be the man is the plan. And like, you've really, you've really got, I'm gonna say wrestle with it, but not in a negative way. You've got to come together and say, what's our philosophy about it? Are we, here, are we in it to win it and become millionaires together? Are we, are we not? Like, I'm, I'm in a blended family. I got, uh, I was, I didn't get married until I was, see, I had Tristan, my daughter at 41. She's 13. Um, and I'm reversing an age, so it's all fine. Um, so, <laughs> so um, she's almost 14. I married her father two years later. So I was married at 43, divorced by 44 and a half and then remarried at 50. 
and in a blended family. So my husband's from Canada. He's got two daughters. They, so we always say we have four children, four donors. So we have, <laughs> everybody's got a different, you know, mom or dad. We've got four kids. We've got 13, 14, 18, 20, completely different relationships with money. And you can imagine I have two, you know, stepdaughters with mothers with very socialized nation uh, thinking. And a husband is, you know, moving to the United States. So the blended families are rough. Like, because you got, you have to think about the psychology and how do you put it together? And here's where I would say, what's going to help it? Communication. What do you want? You know, and if you can't come together what you want before you get married, you better get a damn good prenuptial. Uh, and I'm serious about those. Because I came into the marriage, you know, very, very, very well off. And he didn't. You know, that's not where he came from. He actually had a job when I met him. I told him I couldn't date him unless he quit his job. I gotta have no, a job. Women want to know if you got a job. You're like, no, I don't want, you can't have a job. <laughs> no, he can't have it. No, right? Oh my God, that's so funny. No, <laughs> that would be totally out of integrity. Anyway, so, but he's, he's very entrepreneurial and he was in the middle of um, buying a company and just needed that extra, you know, support. And so I actually wrote the business plan and uh, together acquired an amazing company, quit his job, became a great entrepreneur and kind of the rest is history, you could say, but it's that vision of who do we want to be? And I don't care where you came from, but with money, like, and, and here's the here's the thing, and you guys, you guys are probably with people that are, you know, you're, you're in the marriage business, I'm in the money business, but the two go hand in hand because every day you spend money, married or not. So then you gotta say, well, how are we gonna spend it? How are we gonna invest it? And honestly, for a lot of couples, like how what we did is what's mine is mine, what's yours is yours, what ours is ours. And just keep it separate and live, you know, just live in those tracks for your children, however you're gonna do it. So I love coaching families around it because I've been through up and down I got the most expensive divorce I think anybody's ever had to have and um, people don't talk about it and you and you guys are knowing me well enough I will talk about anything and I love getting right in the middle of families and talking about the tough stuff yeah because I think it's critical you got to talk about it yeah. and what do you want exactly. you want to be rich you want to be poor but together you got to figure it out because you can't have one rich and one poor you'll end up in divorce so don't even think that's a fantasy you you're gonna have to get it together that's exactly it. And that's yeah. what we do with um, couples. We have to talk about the uh, uh, communication piece, communicating about the finance. And and so what we did because uh, of the finance, when we had our conferences, we would bring in Edward Jones to talk about the planning. And so what we did, yeah, and <laughs> exactly. So we went and got our own licenses and now we're able to sell um, you know, retirement and, and uh, life insurance, the IULs and things like that to help you know, give them a plan on how to, you know, build and protect wealth. Um, yeah, good it, for it's you. Very, exactly. It's very important to talk about that communication about those things yeah. is essential. Yeah, yeah. That could be the one thing that rips you apart. You have to communicate about your finances. You got to communicate about sex. So it goes back to communication. Definitely. Yeah. And, and here's what I'm going to say about goals too with families. And I love that you guys, I didn't realize that. Because you know, each family could have their own trust, right? Let's just say blended families, or each individual could have your own trust, your own life insurance, your own whatever the heck you want to do, and then spend your money differently. Make it a fun competition. I have so many couples, like I have tons of military couples, where one of them is, you know, a man's a plan, and I'm not going to learn. It's like, all right, well, what are you going to do with your money? And they want some hobby business or something. But I have others who say, well, I'm going to go invest in the stock market. God help you. And then those who want to say, well, I'm going to go buy alternative assets. So you know what? You both get to do that. But it's got to be an open agreement about how you're going to do it. It's not every decision. I think what, and I don't know how you guys feel about it. And I don't think there's a right or wrong. But, you know, to have a consensus in every decision, I don't know that that's right. I think, you know, I'm, I'm you, I will, you know enough about me. I, I love alternative assets. I love from, cannabis to real estate to gas and oil to you name it i i have loved uh learning about it investing in it and you know what 
if, if if my spouse wanted like the stock market and play, then go play. It's like you can't contain some of that. And I think the other part is spending. Like you you got to agree on some level of spending, but this consensus spending, I don't know how you guys feel about that. I'd love to hear, but I'm, I'm not in agreement about consensus spending and consensus investing. I think there's got to be some agreement about you do what you want to do. But, well, and you can tell that I'm a very strong woman and advocate for women to stand up. And the man is not a plan is not because it sounds kind of cute and cliche. It's because the amount of widows that I have, and you can imagine the life insurance policies that they sit on. And then they come to me, their husband's gone and they know nothing. They don't know where their deeds of trust are. They don't know, they don't even know if they own a car or not. They don't have it alone. Like, that is so irresponsible. Call it the man or the woman or a family to have allowed that. Like, I'm so, get your kids involved. I think in your kids are teenagers in a family relationship your kids should know what's going on they should know that you're in debt they should know that you don't make money they should know everything they should know that you're wealthy they should know everything i think it's a family engagement and you set your kids up to win as a relationship and that's important because yeah. i think so many times in families it's kind of mom and dad handling well what if something happens to mom and dad unexpectedly right. what, how are your kids going to to navigate what's going to transpire so i know even with our kids being teens one just turned 18 one 16 we've been having these conversations off and on if anything happens to mommy and daddy this is where this is located this is our expectation you know and start having those conversations you know what would you do? How would you handle this mom? To get a feel for their mindset. Because of course we're going to tell them yes. this is what we want for you. But then yes. say, okay, you know, they're learning. Hey, you know, I, I, one thing you do is you're, you're going to get you a, a place. You're going to have a place to stay. You're not going to blow your money on this amount. You know, just have those conversations so they understand what you have in place and where and what's the procedure for following through. Yeah, I mean, I made sure that they understood the basics about um, like building and protecting wealth with insurances. And I explained to them what an IUL, Index Universal Life Insurance. Everybody in this family has one. Right. And so I told I told my daughter and my son, I say, look, by the time you graduate, your your IUL will have enough money for you can pull it out tax free and go purchase your home cash. Right. If and, and if you want, you don't have to come to mommy and dad and say, hey, I need a down payment. No, you go get your own money <laughs> out of your own insurance. I mean, this is what's left over. Right. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Now, right. and what I love too is, you know, when our kids are 18, they're adults. Like mine's yeah. signed into LLCs at 18 for his birthday gift. Like, and is so engaged. And so, you know, in, in his, his gift, he's, he's getting a triple major, accounting, finance, management. So we're a little blessed in that he loves the, the work and the content, uh, but I don't care what they want to do. I don't care if they want to go be a snowboard professional or what they want to do. At 18, they're an adult, and so many adults do not transfer or even start the conversation of wealth transfer, and they leave it to. I mean, you just you know, I speak from such a place of experience of families who have just God, how, I, how did they make those decisions? How do they allow a, a bank who knows nothing about the family, an accountant who knows nothing about the family, a lawyer to do make all the decisions for these kids who are now adults? Like, let it run. Like, I'm not a fan of the surprise basket at the end of your life where nobody knows what anything is besides like, bam, mom and dad die and now the will's red. Like, that's horrible for a family. Mm, yeah. And believe me, I have, I bet I get at least two or three of those clients every month. Because the family's fighting and the family's at war and the family's pissed off because mom and dad didn't teach them anything. They don't know where anything is. And now they're burdened. And I don't think that's what families and those that are married that are out there listening transfer like at least knowledge yeah. and uh, responsibility to your kids early. Early, so, early, early. So for our couples out there, let's start for the getting ready to get married um, and having premarital counseling. How <laughs> What advice uh, would you give them uh, for planning about their financial futures uh, moving forward? For early, early? Mm -hmm. Yes. They, they, let's say they just graduated college. They're like 23, 24 years old and they're getting mad. Don't. Uh, wait a few years. So I'm a huge fan of later. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but man, 20s are when you sort your life out, 30s are when you figure it out, and 40s is when you run. So mm -hmm. I just think so many that you don't know, right? Mm -hmm. And if you come from money, mm -hmm. um, 
I can guarantee if you have smart parents, you're being highly protected of that conversation. So what I would say to them, if they're really intent to 24, 25 to get married, start a conversation. But at that point, depending on where you are with your family, um, especially if you've come from some sort of like, you know, like even life insurance, it doesn't even matter if there's not money on the planet today. As you all know, I love that you guys are in this, that part of the business, because I would say generational starts, generational wealth starts at some point when y'all die and when I die, right? And then the money goes. And if they're not well prepared for that, why do it? It's irresponsible. So I think that the family's got to get really honest. The kids got to get really clear. Um, at, in this day and age, I would say, you know, postpone kids and let's focus on your like financial infrastructure, your corporate structure, your trust, your insurance, you know, the stuff that we would talk about. And how do you both contribute? Do you both contribute? I'm pretty independent, as you can tell. So I have very independent relationships. And that doesn't mean the marriage won't work. That doesn't mean that at all. And I think prenuptials have such a bad name for insecure people. I'm Scott, you, you, I just told you what I thought. I just, I think, you know what, if you're going to go run and, and go for it, because see, most of the divorces happen for those who are married at that early age, where they're trying to figure it out together. They're trying to keep it together. And one person wants to run, the thoroughbred wants to run, and the other one wants to stay in the stable. That doesn't mean they can't coexist, but they're not mature enough. They don't have enough experience, which is why they need you guys as mentors, me as a mentor, just for questioning. Just have somebody in your camp that's gonna talk about what do you really want from where you can stand and where you can see, because that's really young, you know? At that point, my gosh, I was skiing around the world. I was making a ton of money with Chevron, right? 24 years old, had a multi-million dollar contract. I I visited at, like any continent that I could like powder ski and jump, you know, clip. So I burned it, you know, I didn't save, I didn't save money, I didn't invest money in my 20s, I was playing. Hello. So I think it's young. I just, I, I don't know how you guys feel about that, but I think, uh, Involve your parents, especially if they have money. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, typically it, it, it really depends on um, each couple. You know, some couples, yeah. um, like we, we talked to, it's it's better for them. Like if you talk about, you know, joint accounts versus separate accounts, it all depends on, <laughs> <laughs> it all depends on the individuals. Uh -huh. Um, but even if they have a joint account, I th we, we talk about that they each should have their individual accounts. So they can, yes. you know, they have their separate, spend, they have that money that they're right going to spend and they don't have to butt heads on yeah. things, you know. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. I would agree with that. I think for like, call it a joint house account. That's yeah. totally, totally good. But I think they need their own independence to spend and to do what they want and to contribute and to make money. And if, you know, you've got somebody who hardly wants to run, you gotta let them run. Like right. here, here's where it's detrimental is when, and I, I'm, and when one person is more dominant, which is typically a, a man in the relationship, um, sometimes it's women like, but I, I'm not seeing like some huge trend. I'd love to see more of a trend, right? I'm sure we both would, um, is that when they're caught off guard when when a death happens like I, you have no idea you can tell i speak from so much experience of death yeah. and huge life insurance policies no investments people that are really young they've had accidents i have somebody who's 26 years old in a wheelchair and uh her husband they died like he died in a helicopter crash and she was paraplegic she had no idea where the money was no idea like so, you, you know, I, I come from a perspective because I don't get them on the front side. It's very rare people come to me and say, help me plan how this isn't going to get broken. Mm -hmm. Usually it gets broken and then I get to fix them somehow, you know, come up with some strategies on how they're going to make money, how they get to use. I'm, I'm, you have no idea. We're going to have to have a whole private conversation about the fact you guys are in life insurance. Because so, I'm, I'm a massive fan of that. And I think so people, so few people have death, or so many people, I'm sorry, have death insurance, just term insurance that I don't understand because they've been taught about right. death insurance. And it is is such a viable part of your portfolio, right? When do people from Edward Jones and, you know, Fidelity and Schwab say, get your life insurance in order because they don't get paid that way. So they don't, they just overinvest you in crappy stocks and other things like that. So 
I come from, a, if you're hearing the tone of protection, I come from that place because I don't get people usually on the front of front side of creative planning. So I guess when you ask that question, I'm like, boy, when's the last time I've had one of those? Like, uh. <laughs> usually it's on the other side. It's on, it's on a tumultuous divorce or a death or an injury. And oh my mm. God, we weren't set up. So now what do we do to fix ourselves? So if the, you know, our viewers are hearing that, just from the experience that I, I've been given. Well, yeah, that's what we try to do is we try to give in, in premarital counseling and coaching. Mm -hmm. We try to get them to plan and for those things that exactly what you mentioned, um, to prepare for those things. Like make sure that, you know, you have life insurance, but also um, that not just the term, because everybody always says, oh, I want the cheapest one. Yeah. No. no. So basically you're betting, you're betting if the, the company's betting that you can last longer than, yeah. <laughs> than like if it's a 10 year or 20 or 30 year, they want to make sure that you live longer than that so they don't have to pay up mm -hmm. and you get no money. There's no living benefits. Right. And so that's where we try to do some educating before um, they have to come into that part. And that's why we talk about in the, the IULs and the retirement, how you can retire with tax free, get like hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah. tax free for the rest of your life and still have living benefits. Be able yeah. to go and pull out $500,000 tax free. You can't do that with 401ks. And a lot of people don't think that. They think they got a 401k and they got term life with the corporation or what have you. And they think they're good, you know? So that's that's the part where we come in and talk about the preparing, you know, before they get into those situations. Yeah. But, well, and here's here's as 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 folks mature. I'm gonna just go go to the experience because, like pre marriage, like I said, it's pretty rare. I get them. I get them. So how I I see them is usually from a client of ours, right? Client of mine in the community, who is a millionaire, multimillionaire, and their child is marrying somebody that's not. So I get a lot of you know I get that conversation from somewhere that somebody has generated money or a life insurance policy and um but let's go forward let's okay let, i think most couples right let's if you really think about making money uh and i'm going beyond the job let's just say both are entrepreneurs this yeah. is where i think both of them need to stand independent they need their own companies they can have a management company they can have some things together like my husband has his own stuff i have my own stuff and then we're building stuff right together mm -hmm. um and but you, you know just have your own independence in that corporation and go get other partners so let's just say you know you two and i wanted to go together and go do something cool around money and marriage my husband's not going to say well wife you can't do it he's going to say go girl like Good luck. And this is our, like what we create is what we're going to create. How you give it to your kids and how I give it to my kids is different. If he wants to go out and go build, you know, because he's a huge, amazing contractor, then he can do that. And then that goes for his, you know, his girls. And then what we do, we can share between our kids. I think there's such logical things that families can do. Um, it's the insecurity of the person that is usually the problem. Right. right? Or when one has given up, you know, I have a huge heart for what I call, you know, those stay home moms, they're raising little souls, right? They're raising amazing, they're either doing it well or whatever, but let's just say they're doing it really well. Um, that's a huge, you know, choice for the family to make. And what do they get if they die? Like who's going to take care of the kids? Nobody ever thinks about that side. What if that person's the one that goes? So I'm usually in the what if conversations about marriages. So I'm a huge fan of prenuptials when you come into marriage, especially later in life, especially by the families. Um, and I'm a huge fan of insurance and islets and trusts to pass on for generations. And I think during the marriage, you gotta have some freedom, you know? I know people who love real estate and they need to go buy it, they need to go do it. And if your spouse doesn't want to, then they can go do what they wanna do. I think there's gotta be a little more freedom in the space of letting each person be a person. And it doesn't have to be money. Money isn't the marriage. Right. But it, but it's interesting how money defines it, isn't it? That's it true. Is. It has it a does. tremendous impact on it. Very much That's so. Really the lack thereof. And it's always <laughs> a division when you have someone who's in corporate America who is in an entrepreneurship. When they both are entrepreneurs, it's a much easier conversation. Yeah. But tell us about 
um, your programs that you have about building wealth. We want to know about make, becoming that multimillionaire <laughs> because we see that you have created multiple millionaires. And so I know everyone is interested in that piece. So, um, boy, where do I start? So I've been doing it for a long time. 1996, like I said, I met Robert Kiyosaki, Sharon Lecter, became a millionaire in 1999. Had a look back. My millionaire status was from real estate in the Oklahoma, Kansas, Arkansas markets, believe it or not. Everybody else says, and I haven't said that for a long time, but I think it's important for people to realize I never left the Midwest when, with my investing. I live in amazing places, but I invest what makes sense. The Midwest is always where it makes sense. I mean, I'm, I invest other places, but that's always the, like my core. And then in gas and oil, because I worked for Chevron for a long time. So, I have now, I'm going to just start kind of my funnel. What do I have now? I have five New York Times bestselling books. So for listening to uh, our broadcast, I'd love to give everybody my Put More Cash in Your Pocket book. It's so relevant to COVID and what's going on right now. You, 38 million people are unemployed. You have got to have, oh my gosh, can you imagine the marital wars going on? It, you're either, at, you know, you're like, oh my gosh, we're coming together and spending time. You're fighting. The bills are getting tight. Unemployment's not making it. 38 million. I don't even think that statistics ever happened in our country. So you got to think like, what are you going to do? Become an entrepreneur. That's my challenge to folks. Why you're sitting on unemployment, become an entrepreneur. So I teach people how. So every month, uh, April I did one, May I did one, now in June. 10, 11, 12th is my next workshop. I'm doing, uh, it's about 48 hours. It starts Wednesday night, June 10th, and it ends on June 12th. And in that period, as long as you do everything I say, you will make money. I've had people make 1,000, 1,800, 2,300, 2,400, 5,200 is the most so far that's been reported in 48 hours. So I'm going to help you make money. Like I just do. It's my gift from God. I know how to help you make money. So show up. I'm only charging $97 for my online course. And then from there, I have, you know, our, we have, a, have an income program. I have our, what's called our big table um, community. I've been doing this for 20 years. So we have the longest standing uh, millionaire program in the world, actually. So I love it. I help, love helping you make money. So I just kind of meet you where you are. So make money, keep money, invest money with the team. We just uh, continue to sequence exactly how you need to do it. And uh, we start you with books. We start you with what I call fast cash calls. So you learn to make money fast. And then we, we do this workshop. And uh, by 8 August, I'm sorry, by August, we're going to be going to Boise, Idaho. And we're going to be doing a real estate tour. So uh, anybody who signs up for the workshop and uh, completes it will get two tickets to our Boise uh, real estate tour because it is the fastest growing market in the United States right now. And it, like people are coming there in droves. It is insane to watch that demand market. And wow. I've, uh, I've made a run through Boise before in 2006, seven and eight. And if you would have told me here I am 12 years later making another run through that city, I would have told you you're insane, but here we are. So it's fun. So we we do real stuff. Um, I'm in the middle of a big cannabis build with clients. And uh, once that starts, we'll bring people out. We'll show you how cannabis has grown uh, very privately in Nevada. Um, We've taken people to hemp farms in Oregon, to Texas gas and oil fields in Texas. And it's not that, you know, I'm showing you what I do because I'm not a financial planner. You're not investing with me. I'm just showing you how the world of wealthy people work and how we invest in them. It's very different. Wow. Super fun. So do you, would you mind saying one more time because we want to make sure our listeners get there. You have a program that's available. It's for $97. 97 bucks and they're going to make money in the workshop. While right, so we're in the workshop. Fast cash. It's called, so it's actually called the uh, meetup. It's a virtual meetup and marketplace. We're going to teach you how to be in a marketplace. But part of the purchase is you get to come to three hours a week of fast cash calls. So you're going to meet with my, my top, top marketing and sales guys. And so Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, you'll talk on the phone. You'll get your funnel ready, you get your pricing ready, your process is ready. You show up to the workshop June 10, 11, 12, and you make some money. It's super fun. Super fun. You can, and people say, well, what am I going to sell? I can already tell, like, most of them are going to go, what am I selling? I don't know, whatever you're in business doing. Um, maybe you're in the wine business, you're in the HGH business, you're in a lotion and potion, you're in, you know, uh, new skin, isogenics. You are an expert in marriage counseling. You sell your marriage counseling. You're an expert in chiropractic and health. You're an expert in hair. I have artists. I mean, whatever. 
I have lawyers that show up. I have doctors that show up. Um, whatever, I have car experts who show up. Um, I have, I had a welder. I had a welder who actually now has become a millionaire and he went from welding in a union in a hourly job to now becoming a metal artist, new name, new brand, new money, and builds those beautiful iron gates that are in the front of people's shops. It's welding, it's metal art. So it just depends what you want to do. So you just bring something and then we mold it to create it as a sellable product or service for the community. I always say, you know, my my uh, my saying about our marketplace is you can pay Amazon 33% or keep it all and come to my marketplace. Oh, I like, I like that. that. I like that. But how can they yeah. sign up? At my sign up? Yeah, so you're gonna go to uh, a couple places, you go to asklaurel.com. So my millionaire maker, right? So asklaurel.com, you'll get my free book there. That's where you're gonna get my free book. Join our Millionaires in Training um, Facebook group. And um, there's a link right there, or you can just skip the link, go to, um, and I'm sorry, I didn't tell you this story. Like I've got uh, what's called millionairemakerstore.com. And right at the top is my June 10, 11, 12, uh, three day event. And with that, you're going to get some tickets to go to my Boise tour. And come on, it's August. By then, we're all going to be set free. At least come out and breathe and um, come to Boise and see what real estate looks like. It's insane. Wow. And it's, it's retail, it's residential, it's fourplexes, it's apartments. It's a lot of strategies. So what I love about this couple that's put this uh, tour together for us is just how diverse their opportunities and what I want, you know, for folks that are whether they're in Florida or wherever is take the knowledge and take it back to your hometown. If it works, it works. If not, you can do whatever you want to invest with them. Wow. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Oh, I, never been I can see you there. No time like the present. <laughs> I'm always ready. <laughs> You're going to bring your 18 year old. I got to get my. I always say, if you know, if you can't do it for yourselves, do it for your kids. I love teaching. Like the teens are so magnificent in their thinking and their ability to see what's next. Yeah. Yeah, we, we've started her. Um, um, really, we didn't really start her LLC. She's also going to be an author. She graduated high school at 17 with her college degree, her AA degree, and she just got accepted yeah. at the University of Florida. Yeah. Um, and she's going to get her, her bachelor's in business and in international business. She already speaks three different languages and she's working on Chinese, Mandarin. Love her. French. Yeah. yeah. I'll adopt it's, her. Yeah, yeah. She's already an author now. So yeah. <laughs> we're like, we're, we're starting her on LLC and uh, she's yeah. starting businesses now. So we are, this is right up her alley. <laughs> yeah. For her 18th birthday, we decided we we help her with the investment in a health and wellness company. So she's starting that part and okay. she's to get licensed as a financial services advisor as part of our team. So we want to start, let her start creating, generating multiple streams of income and learning how to, to run her own businesses at this age. So. Yes. so bring her along. And by the way, the $97 is for your family, obviously, because oh. you're going to be watching it on Zoom. So both of you, she can come. And uh, what's fun is for, especially for daughters like that, like we have internships with CPAs, um, insurance companies, financial planning, alternative financial planning, real estate. Um, so you can imagine uh, the cannabis, we're going to take some interns who want to actually learn not to smoke weed, to understand the business of cannabis. Mm -hmm. some, it's legal, it's fine. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we have huge internships for the students of our clients to help them really immerse themselves in real business. Uh, and soon, um, a whole group of my clients are going to own a Ford dealership out of Dallas, Texas. In the next oh, wow. Oh, no, that's going to be awesome. Man, you got to see There's so many businesses that need money right now. Like, you have to think about the amount of businesses that need money. And if I'm sitting out there as a married couple saying, well, we both are employed. What if one of us became an entrepreneur? The other can go back to work, whichever. You know, I say find the fastest path to cash. I mean, there are so many opportunities in your community. Somebody owns every business in your town why don't you own more so it's kind of my saying own more of what's right around you wow somebody does right, like what can we do we gotta, we gotta start <laughs> another <more>. business <laughs> we gotta start another business all right well, hey wow. i've already written it down June. yeah written it down for june wow, so we're going to asklaurel.com uh, you got that right <laughs> <laughs>
So good to be with you guys. Oh, wow. Oh, man. I have another question for you. What's uh, one lesson that you've learned thus far that's going to help inspire women to continue to help change the face of this country? It's our time. Mm -hmm. It's our time. So I, 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 I not only think, uh, I know that growing up, it was so difficult to find a mentor. So in 1996, when I found Sharon Lecter, who's my financial mom, I mean, she flew to Banff, Canada to our wedding. Uh, it's so interesting to find a real, like I'm talking a millionaire, multimillionaire woman to actually take you by the hand and go for it. And women, you have got to stand up and have bigger goals. Like there are so few women who, you know, we've only been in business as women for maybe 50, maybe 55 years, max, max, maybe 50. And so many women treat businesses, I'm gonna to add to the family versus go for it. Like you have a cause, like, I don't know. I mean, I, my husband and I have this joke because my husband, if you met my husband, you would say not a chance in hell would I have married him. But you know what he provides for me is this fun. We, he rides Harleys. He is sings. He's just the coolest cat. Doesn't give a shit about money. And he's like, you go, girl. You do your thing. I'm doing my thing. And I'll tell you, he gives me the freedom to run, which I already have the freedom to run. But women, you don't take it. You like contribute like your subsidiary to the family. Run. Like women are going to take this next run. I think women are going to take most command. They have been behind men. And I'm not a sexist. Like I don't have any of that drama. But women stand up and it is time. And, and you know what? Our men are waiting for it. You know? I just, I think it's time for women to take a huge run to provide services and products and collaboration that we haven't seen in a long time. You've been the assistant behind the president. It's time to be the president. I know that's right. I'm like, go back. Go back. <laughs> no. no and I, I, don't, I don't say that. Like, I'm, I'm the opposite woman on International Women's Day saying, you know, women, why are women so bad? Let's women all be helpful. It's like, then stop nagging at each other. Stop being these cat fighting weird people. Stop, you know, be the first to attack each other. Stop this nonsense, women, because women do it to each other. Men do not do it. Women, I mean, men, you guys are so cool. You don't, it doesn't even bother you to have the dramas and shit women do to each other. Yeah. So it's time. And it's time for women to raise women and women to raise men. And as a single mom of a man, I've watched a lot of my counterparts that became single moms during the divorce or whatever raise little baby boys. And it's like, just stop that. Raise men and raise women and raise people who are going to lead this country because we're in a damn disaster. What about the media and entertainment field? Um, I know, um, like, Huge. TV shows. Uh, Huge. Are there some opportunities that you know of in that area? Well, I own a Broadway play, so yeah, I think there's a lot. And I think. Um, you know, what's interesting is I look at my daughter, she's 13, and she, you know, she, it's so interesting. If you look behind the gamers of the world and what they're creating, mm -hmm. they're creating amazing geniuses. And so like our kids are going to be hackers. They're going to be gamers. I have gamers in, I don't even know some of the games, um, but I know one of them, I don't know the name of the name, the game, but he just won a $375,000 award for winning this game. I have Fortnite winners. I have Minecraft winners. I have Minecraft designers. And Minecraft, by the way, is the designing of mining for mining Bitcoin. So get the connection, folks. A lot of you parents do not understand. They're teaching kids to mine and to organize and orchestrate and architect Bitcoin and blockchain. Our kids are so damn smart. They are gonna outpower us. So let them run. So I have a lot to say about the next generation. The get, like drones, are you kidding? They're gonna run. Uh, Amazon's gonna have half their warehouses built with drones. Our kids don't even know the jobs that are ahead of them. They're gonna co-create them. So, and my daughter's like, seems like similar to yours. Like we're gonna put her into an architect class. Why? Cause she's been, she can, she beats most people in Minecraft games. She can build faster, she can defend faster. And a lot of you parents have this aversion to letting your kids be online. It is where we're going. Like pay attention folks. Here's what I here's the homework I give to every family right now. Go look up Bitcoin ATMs in my area. 
guaranteed there's one in your backyard or you're in a guarantee they're in Florida. In Florida, uh, digital currency is so immersed in the real estate world. Actually, Florida is where real estate has taken all the transactions out of the middle and you can do a real estate transaction for less than a point. Wow. And it came out of Florida and if digital currency is part of our world. Like you, you can go put in your cash because, oh my God, COVID, you're gonna have to touch it. And you can route it to your, your wallet and you're now living in digital currency. It is not coming, it's here. And I just, I have uh, a lot of uh, concern for the families who aren't like, you're worried about your budget and your job. People who are like light years behind where we're going. That's Ward and June Cleaver, 1960. Welcome to 2020 and 2040. Like it's, we're here. And I think we have a huge obligation to get our kids ready. In fact, they're going to run it. Wow. I tell you. <laughs> 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 we have a lot of with a lot of conversations. So I, I could talk forever. Uh, but I think it's really important. So if you go back to the family, family, talk about money. Get your kids credit card at 13 and monitor them, teach them. Yes, they're gonna screw it up. They're gonna overspend. They're gonna buy shit for their friends and then you correct them. Don't do it at 18, don't do it at 16. Like organize this conversation. You're buying stuff every day, consciously or not consciously, and talk to your family about it. Money's just a vehicle to buy stuff. And you have to grow up. I know our kids are, are pack rats. I mean, they hold on to their money. My son <laughs> Especially my younger daughter, they're like, I swear, like it's so it's him with my stepdaughter and Cam. They we they just like all of a sudden one day they have thousands of dollars. Where'd that come from? They have spent nothing. Isn't that funny? Such a they spend our money and save theirs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we give them money and then next thing you know, he's back for more money. We're like, what did you do? You look at them, you see online and savings. And you're yeah. like, so you're putting away your money and just taking more of mine. <laughs> I know. I'm like, but that's a good thing. You guys are awesome. We could talk all night. <laughs> that's that's on my podcast. Oh, we love it. We oh, love we it. love it. We love talking. I'm just soaking up this information that you're providing. I'm like, wow. I'm excited. <laughs> I, and, and I'm just a true entrepreneur. Because before, she'll tell you, I had an IT company that had government contracts with Arlington National Cemetery and the military. I, I love doing it. You've had the entrepreneur bug. I had it for a long time. time, and I'm bringing her. She, now we into it now. <laughs> it Together. took me a while to shift. Yeah. I, was, I was the one that was comfortable with nine to five, but now I'm like, there's no way. No, no don't way. Go back no way. Can't America go back. Anymore. Yeah. So this is great. No. I'm like, I got to tell everybody who's listening, you're getting a wealth of knowledge yeah. that's mm -hmm. not readily available. This is your opportunity. You need to go to askworld.com and get signed up because I know Sakisha and I are getting signed yeah, up. Absolutely. We're going to definitely try to we're You're going to win. So I actually give huge awards for people who win. Like I've had people make $5,200, $4,500 um, in like two days. In literally two days, I give you this forum to just create cash. So you have to for 97 bucks at least just say all right i'll pay it and i'm gonna make enough to just like at least break even yeah. like play to win Absolutely. here's what i you know what i say to a lot of people you have a car that's more expensive in your driveway and pay more for gas than your own financial literacy for like the rest of your life so like let's play like for real and not like some you know spending weird game let's like get it together like there are so many people who need to contribute right now that have such knowledge and they're just not they're sitting on unemployment collecting the stimulus check hanging out it's like get off of netflix get on get off a of hulu although i like them every once in a while like play to win understand that you have all this time to learn what you've never learned in your lifetime it's time and then get your marriage together and you know the other thing i want to say about married people is uh and one thing jason and i do is we have uh, our individual bucket list with our kids. Like we are very, very strict about my time with my two kids and differently is is that time and his with his daughters is different. So like really create some structure around your time with your family, the money with your family. It's okay that they're different. Um, and then create a damn big bucket list. Yeah, that's true. We create a great bucket list. 
Well, yeah, this is what we tell everybody. This is not the time um, to, to really decrease. This is the time to come together. Of course, you you really, it's a defining moment for relationships. It shows the true character of a relationship. And it shows the, it's the opportunity to really come together and plan and, and, and take action on well building, execute, you know? Yeah. Um, Google is your friend. And I mean, if anything, Google how to make money. And I was just like, this is the time. Everybody's like, well, I don't know what to do, we get bored. And then, you know, I'm like, no, this is the time when you, when you really get the chance to build your, your, your relationship, but also build businesses, build wealth. You I know? have been busier over this last couple months than yeah. ever. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting, it, like, I'm getting, I mean, it's a great opportunity to spend quality time with him. But I spend more time doing work now in these last couple of months than I have in, you know, in a while. And for me, it's it's when you get to see the, the parts start coming together, you start to see the business plans developing and start executing. There's no time for excuses right now. You have time here. It's a matter of what are you going to do with it? There's yeah. plenty of time for TV and everything right now. All When you're getting on, they have Zoom calls, people that are willing to, to Give you that transfer of information that you're looking for to help take your 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 family your your finances to the next level this is the time to take advantage of that so there's no excuse to come out the same way you went in exactly <laughs> yeah i see you know and what you're gonna get rich in the poor get poor let's just talk about it like there's a virus and then there's a political and financial infrastructure mm. the rich are gonna get rich or the poor are gonna get poor gonna happen and it was designed this way if you know i always say covid's like creature of jekyll island remade <laughs> yeah another conversation another podcast <laughs> so that means we're gonna have to do another one of these right. this has definitely been amazing we wow. could do a series yeah sounds hey. good hey we can we get it on the books <laughs> It's definitely oh, especially when you have those couples out there that are hungry to learn to gain information and you know i'm like a little sponge right now it's like oh they're doing the zoom okay let's do this so this is what we need to implement this is the part of the business that was missing so now you can start to to put these pieces of the puzzle together well we like to, for everybody who's been uh on the show we also like to give away uh, a free gift mm -hmm. um what we like to do is take it, your, your cell phone out and text WIN to 407-258-1246. That's 407-258-1246 and, and text WIN. Now, do you have any, um, do you have uh, any uh, other words or any, um, Anything else you'd like to share with the, the viewers right now? I have so much. Um, <laughs> for this minute, mm -hmm. um, just go to Ask Laurel. Re Here, okay, so I'm going to give them a homework, right? If you're not married, fine, read my book. So go to AskLaurel.com. You'll get the ebook delivered like right away and join my millionaires in training. I did an amazing broadcast today about how you think about money. See, some of you, and this is part of your marital discourse, is that you're wired for a budget. This is how much money we make, this is what we can spend. And of course, I'm the bullshit person. You can spend whatever you want, but you have to make it, which means you gotta be creative and a problem solver and make money. You can have anything you want. Um, so there's a way that you are wired and the way that you behave every day. So read my book, read Put More Cash in Your Pocket, go to askworld.com and get it. And then uh, you'll be guided over to the millionermakerstore.com. Go buy the $97 and we'll all see each other June 10th to make some money together. But really get think through, like, you know, how are you wired for money? Because it's gonna, it's either gonna support you or be a huge, um, not a, like, it, you, you can overcome it, but it's gonna be in your way, in your conversations, in your marriage all the time, all the time. And I have a huge thing, like in my relationships and joint ventures, which are mostly men at this point, um, is when we have an LLC, for example, in our operating agreement, I don't want their partner, their wife to be my partner because I'm not gonna deal with, or, or if, it's a, if it's a woman, their man. So there are so many things I have to teach you about how to do deals, how to structure safety in your family and your relationships for buy-sell agreements and all sorts of, like this is the, the 
like basic stuff. So let me take you to another level of how this really works and how you protect your family for a very long time and create wealth for a long time. So start with putting more cash in your pocket and read it independently. Like if you're together, don't read it together and compare notes, read it independently, take your own notes, make your own conversations. And then that's where I love to come in. Then I'd love to coach you on uh, how you can make it work no matter where you are, but you've got to do your own work. Awesome. Did you have one more question? No, I, I, actually I was thinking, but she asked, but um, Laurel's out, uh, put it out there. I was thinking, what is one resource that you feel that couples or can be an individual in business should not be without in this day and time? Can I say my book? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so I say you've already put it out there. Uh, yeah, put more cash in your pocket. Yeah, put more cash, but also you can go to Amazon or wherever and go get my Millionaire Maker book. Um, it's so critical that you get money right. Um, this is sort of, you know, a little gift that you have a time to sort it out. Um, it's going to take it. The takeoff from this place is enormous. And if you don't even have your base of your financial infrastructure, right? Like all the rest of it is noise. Like, and you can say, well, and I don't believe it's the most important thing. I think it has impact. So if you don't have the ability to transact, what are you going to do? Like you have got to take this seriously and you're casual. I'll have a paycheck coming soon or unemployment. Maybe not, maybe not, maybe not in a year. So I think it's really serious and I take it very serious. And you saw my energy just shift. So, um, read my damn books and let me teach you. Cause I think it's very serious. And if you don't do it, what are you going to do? Just continue to make it up in a very uneducated way. And I do have to say this cause you guys have mentioned Google. Um, you know, what's the, the good and the bad is you, I'm sure had a huge traffic influx online. I've had a huge flux influx, but there's a lot of other people who don't have any clue when they're on the internet. And so the problem with the internet is very crowded right now. Um, we've all seen delays and there's a lot of bad information. So like learn to know what's right and what's not. Like you, you need to do due diligence. It's really risky. There's more scams than I've ever seen. I mean, huge amounts of money being transferred illegally and just scams. So be careful out there. It's a shitty little place out there. So be careful. What I would look at is history. How long have you guys been around? How long have I been around? How long have people been around? If it's some new kid on the block with some newfangled stuff, just be careful. And I'm not saying they're wrong. Just pay attention. It's, it's it's unbelievable. So why do I have that knowledge? Because guess what I get? Not going into the mess, I get them after the mess. So I, I must be like, I actually created a, a program. Uh, it's called the Financial First Aid Kit because I kind of get people after they get cut. And so I'm putting little band-aids on and stitches. <laughs> I, like I, like I do a financial first aid kit to help people get their life back. This awesome. has been great. This has really been awesome. I so, appreciate you guys. Thank you. You guys are amazing. Oh, thank you. Yes, this has thank been you. informative. We really it. Very informative. And all the viewers out there, there you got it. You get all your information. Go to askmoral.com. It's no excuse for you now. Right now, go to askworld.com. Go ahead and sign up for the boot camp yeah. right now and get her book. Yes. Because I know I'm getting the book. Absolutely. <laughs> and I'm getting my ticket to go to <laughs> so, Thank you guys. Thank you. Now, what would be your one, I'd say, strategy that you will offer to couples in that couples that are perhaps either whether they're in business together or business separately, but in order for their marriage to win, what's that one key piece of advice that you would offer? Mm, be clear who you want to be as an individual and bring your whole self to the relationship. Identity. Mm -hmm. That's, That's awesome. great. A lot of times you'll compromise yourself to like kind of feed in, right? Because there's a, and, and the longer you're together, it's kind of interesting how the, uh, you, you fill in for each other, which is, which is great. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to who you want to be in the world and what your contribution to the world, be really clear and don't compromise that because there's a huge compromise to everything else. Right. Um, other people need what you have. That's a huge message that I give is, you know, like 20 here's out here's an example. Like 2020 is my transition year. My son is going to 
right? Start for Georgia Southern, right? Play ball and I'm gonna watch him play, which means I'm not going on stages every Friday and Saturday when everybody gets to be free to go to the workshop. I'm gonna be in blue and silver in a sand and be a raving lunatic mother very <laughs> rooting for my son. So this was my year to transition. Like, you know, and uh, it didn't happen that way. So March, I came to the playing field and a lot of my mentors, I always have mentors, by the way, I haven't mentioned that a lot, always have mentors. Uh, and I love negotiating marriages and relationships and what's going on. And um, I just, I said, oh my gosh, like here we are. And I have never, to your point, been so active. I'm gonna call it busy, cause busy is boring. Like, I am so engaged. I have, like, you are my, like, this is my fifth or sixth interview today. I can't even keep track of, there's so many. Like, people need knowledge. And like, last week I was with Jordan Belfort, The Wolf of Wall Street, Sharon Lecter. I've been like, it's just amazing, amazing people because the world needs the right stuff. And it's not my time to transition. It's just not, and it won't happen this year. Uh, I'm gonna still watch and I might play. Here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna be like, on a tailgate going, all right, go like this and do this. And I'm gonna tell you about money and I'm gonna go watch my son play ball, but I am not missing and I'm not gonna be on stage. I can tell you that this year. So I think that a lot of, uh, you gotta be true. Like, what do you really want? Who do you wanna be on the other side of this? Because if you think about the amount of time, we're in 90 days of quarantine. And if you haven't learned anything, put anything to work, made new money. Like my first three day broadcast with Marketplace came in April, uh, 15, 16, 17, then we did 13, 14, 15 to May. We're doing 10, 11, 12 in June. We're going together in July. I want to teach people to be entrepreneurs. I want to end this with the most amazing group of entrepreneurs. And now we get together to say, let's go do deals. Let's go play. Uh, I see that's awesome. This is a blessing. Families need to band together and bring your kids like you you have amazing kids so bring them to the playing field you know university is going to teach them what university is teaching but we are going to yeah. show them a different world oh exactly awesome. exactly is awesome. this has been a blessing and it's yeah. great that you have someone who is blessed who's who's also distributing that blessings to others yeah, yeah. so again before we close everybody go to askflora.com and remember every tuesday night Tonight we're doing dual multitasking tonight yeah. because every Tuesday night on the Love Radio Network, we're also live there tonight. But tonight <laughs> we're, we're, we're simultaneously. <laughs> we're actually doing a replay on the radio show tonight. <laughs> but yeah, this has been great. This, this has been great. Been. But we're going to call it tonight. And uh, so everybody just remember that you can be the change that you want to see in your relationship and tonight you got the change in your finances yeah. and so you be the change in your finance and in your relationship <laughs> that you want to see until next time uh -huh. bye, bye. bye.